put off by how long this video is, don't worry. I tend to jam-pack my videos with as much content, as many details as I possibly can, and I try to talk pretty fast. So while the video is a bit on the long side, I don't repeat myself and I get into a lot of details about the subject that, you know, pretty much anything that I feel I can comment on and that I think you might find interesting. Payback movie thoughts. So I love pretty much everything about this movie, I gotta say. I suppose I could mention some of my favorite things. I love that he gets the, you know, he gets those last few guys by using the bomb that some of their own guys set up. You know, because they didn't know, you know, Fairfax and Bronson, they didn't know that, you know, that was the way the hit was going to be carried out. Heck, I'm not even sure they knew that a hit would, had been put on Porter. You know, I don't think that, what's his name, Carter actually told them that. So, yeah, you know, and the fact that it's through the phone and that just just before the explosion, you have the just brilliant line, impeccably delivered, of you were right not to trust me. You know, just perfect. You know, not like some lame, no, just you were right not to trust me. Just, you know, I love when Porter does that, when there is that sort of, yeah quality to it, and the way that it's shot and edited, where the first time you watch this movie, you you don't realize that he didn't give them the right address, you know, you really think that he actually led them to, and it's brought up earlier in the movie, you know, what if they ask you hard, you know, and we find out that's what happens when they ask him hard, you know, and just the, you know, and, and sort of just the, I don't know, the human touch of just, you know, he hears a phone ring, he picks it up, you know, it's just, it's not his apartment, it's not his phone, but it's just, you know, you hear a phone, you might pick it up, so, you know, and the porter, when he hears it, he's like, something's wrong. No one has this number, no one knows I'm here. It's just, you know, he's always thinking, you know, and you see that also in the, I love how this movie establishes, some something like how when he wakes up, you know, that first time, in, back in his wife's apartment, or his apartment, I guess, you know, right after he wakes up, you see him, you know, with the gun in hand, you know, he had that under the, the cushion, I guess, you know, sofa cushion thing, and it's just, of course, you know, because everyone wants to kill him, you know, or there are people who still want him dead, so, yeah, makes perfect sense, why wouldn't he sleep with the gun, and why wouldn't he keep it hidden, so that, you know, someone breaks in the door, he, he can get the gun out, you know, in time, and no one's gonna sneak it away from him, no one even knows he has it until he starts shooting, you know. And the, but, but yeah, so, you know, you, you think that he actually gave them that address, and you're like, oh, you know, poor Maria Bello, you know. And they open it, and the phone ring, and you think that he's gonna call her and warn her, you know, and say like, I'm sorry, I gave them the right address, you know. It's just, nope. He, he just wanted to make sure that, you know, the bomb went off, or he wanted to make the bomb go off, you know, it's excellent, just, yeah. And, you know, the, and I love that they actually leave little Johnny just, you know, handcuffed to a radiator, <laughs> you know, and it's just like, ah, he's going to be found eventually, you know, he can scream and shout until someone hears him or something, you know, and it's just, you genuinely don't care, you know. I I had watched the film several times before, but I couldn't remember for sure if they actually did leave him like that, or if they like know, let him go or something. But yeah, it's just you. He, he's such a jerk, you know. You just hate that little spoiled brat, you know. It's just ah, oh, I got a Ferrari for birthday. Ah, oh, just. Ah, you, you want to choke him, you know, and I love that Porter gets the, you know, because Johnny is such an arrogant little turd, 
Porter figures out how, what he looks like, you know, because he's standing there with the binoculars. He just knows that Johnny's going to be at the game. He has no idea what he looks like. He didn't even know there was a little Johnny until, you know, when he overhears that phone call, you know, and that's where he hears that, you know, oh, they're going to be at the game, ringside seats and all that, you know, and he's just standing there with the binoculars looking around and the, you know, happy birthday Johnny gets up on the text and he's like, ah, yeah, that's me, you know, and... The porter figures out, okay, so that's him, and he lets Rosie know, and yeah, that's it, you know. Now that I mentioned Rosie, I love how he finds her as well. That, you know, the you know, he gets the address for the, the hotel, and he, you know, goes up to the guy. You know, I, I heard you were the guy to talk about horizontal recreation, you know, something like that, he says. These matters are usually handled more with more discretion. Be discreet now, you know, and he's just standing there, just, you know, and, and you're just thinking, that's gonna hurt, that is, that is just evil right there, you know, but it's just, that's Porter, he's not gonna take any crap, that's, that's all it is, you know, he, he cuts through the BS and he just doesn't care, he wants his money back, and this is part, you know, he is, he's just man on a mission and, it's just, get out of my way, you know, just that attitude throughout the film, and yeah, I, I love when he kills Val, you know, the, you got, you know, it sounds like Val is gonna, like, help him out, get into the, the syndicate, and, you know, he's just like, you know, oh, yeah, you are crazy, you crazy son of a bitch, and he's just, uh, do, do you have a light, a, a light, and he's just, he's got the hands all bloody, uh, no. And what good are you? Pfft, you know, I just, yeah, that's, you know, <laughs> that's perfect, you know, because, yeah, he doesn't need Val anymore, and it's not, why leave Val capable of, you know, backstabbing, backstabbing him again, you know, and that's the thing. So many Hollywood action movies would have him just say, ah, just get out of here, you know, and he comes back and, you know, backstabs him again, or tells the bad guys w that he's coming here, something like that, but, yeah, you know, no, it's just, why be stupid about it, you know, and that's th the thing you, with that, I mean, he, he makes a few miscalculations, but he tends not to be stupid about what he does, you know, Porter, he does, you know, he should have maybe seen coming that Val was going to have some, you know, someone attack him when he goes for the payoff, you know. And I, I love the running gag of people thinking that he wants the full 130000 or th at least that that it's not just seventy grand. You know, whenever he tells someone it's seventy grand, he just, they're like, no one would be stupid enough to do this for seventy grand. Just get, get out of here. Obviously, there's more than that, you know. And I love that the last time, you know, he's sitting there, I don't remember if... The, his toes might already be smashed at that point. I'm not good with chronologies. You know, but he's just there, you know, blood on, on his face. He's just, you know, Bronson, here's your 130 grand. And Porter's like, forget it. Just, I'm done correcting you people. You know, just, whatever. It's 130, you know. One thing I will say, I do think that you can somewhat tell that this was reshot, you know, that they changed the ending to allow the, you know, sort of happy ending. And I'd especially say it's obvious with the dog. You know, I'm sorry, but I, I have nothing against animals and dogs especially, but that dog was dead when it got shot. It just, yeah, I'm sorry, you know, and, and you have the, that obviously added in line, he'll live, you know, I mean, sure, it's a, it's a badass line, but... Yeah. Yeah, I'm sorry, you know, audiences reacted negatively to it or something, and they changed it, obviously. But, you know, also the whole, as far as I understand, Bronson wasn't originally part of it. It was going to end with, like, Fairfax and Carter or something like that. Or, you know, and he wasn't completely going to win Porter and so something like that. I can kind of see that. It does feel like Bronson was added you know, a little bit of bit last minute, you know, nothing against Chris Christopherson, you know, fresh off of Blade, just as awesome here, but the character does feel a bit added in, you know, excuse me.
I love every scene with Lucy Liu in this. It's just... You know, you, you have her going up to Val, and at that point you already know that Val's a sadist, you know. You found that out when he beat up that Asian dude, you know, and just, ah, oh, the problem with, you know, beating up, you know, you're, you're gonna be wanting to beat one up an hour later, you know, wow. Just, dude, go die, now, you know, but anyway. <laughs> so he, you know, he's, so she comes up to him, you know. And you don't know at that point exactly what her character is. And she starts kicking his ass. And he kicks her ass back. And, you know, just, yeah, you realize, ah, just like, you know, S&M, you know, sex worker kind of thing. And she, you know, the, Val wakes up, gun in his face, you know, Porter. And I love that, you know, he reaches for his gun, just like reflexively, and Porter's like, I took it, you know, obviously. Yeah, again, he's not stupid. And, you know, and, and again, if he wanted him dead, he could have shot him in his sleep or sort of, you know. And the, you know, he's, he's threatening Val, and Val's, like, clearly just scared out of his mind. And the, the reaction on Lucy Lou is just... Yeah, priceless. I think that's the word. You know, it's just... She starts, like, tweaking his nipples, and, like, you know, she's totally into it. And, you know, she's like, no, you know what? Don't beat him up. I'm gonna beat him up, you know? Because <laughs> she's, she's into it, and she's uh, beating him up, and he, like, gets one swing in at her. Porter's in it there, you know, ready with a gun. Let her work. And just, oh, man, and just, you know, and especially the... Me love you long time, Ben. Oh, man, that is just, ugh. And, you know, and, and the, the exchange between her and Porter. I've got a few minutes. You know, she's just getting his attention with the, the crop, the, the horse, the, the riding crop, you know, on, on his shoulder. Yeah, got a few minutes to go boil an egg. You know, just perfect response. I like Stegman, you know, with all his, like, just this whiny little bottom feeder of just so obviously just nothing, you know, just very bottom of, you know, and I like his, the, the black guy who is like his, you know, who's out in front, you know, and Arthur Stegman here, you know, yeah, he ain't here. Well, when, uh, where is he? I don't know, he ain't here. You know, raises, yeah. Guess. What? Take a guess, where might he be? And, you know, up with the paper. Down with the paper. Where is he? You know, just, and then he just walks in there to, to Arthur, you know, and he like, somebody here to see you. You know, and he walks away, and that porter right behind him, you know, because the black guy was huge, you know. And then you see how he's bleeding, and, and Stegs, Stegman's like, you, you're bleeding all over my couch, you know. But just, and when Stegman gets back to, you know, with the, you know, the, actually also just that when he's there at the back of the car with the two crooked cops, you know, and he's like, Oh, your, your piece of the pie just got smaller, but don't worry, I'm going to leave you some crust, you know. Oh, dude. Ah, oh, just, yeah, somebody kick him in the groin, please. And, you know, then he's, like, driving the cab up to Porter, and Porter's like, oh, a cab, ah, oh, crap. You know, and he gets in, and Segment's like, oh, I'm going to take you in, and I'm going to get a lot of money. Actually, maybe I'll just shoot you, because you're probably going to be difficult. And Porter's like, you know, <laughs> and, Porter's, and and Stegman, you know, with the repeated line of, you know, is Porter going to kill him, you know? And, you know, and, and then the black guy with the shotgun, you know, let him go, you know, and... And then the, the the Asians come back up, you know, hubba, hubba, hubba. And then they just shoot ev at everything in the car. And because Stegman's on the wrong side of the car, Porter just uses him as a shield, gets out of the car, shoots at the, you know, 
yeah, he, he gets behind the, the Asian's car and shoots through the back window, you know, but the, the driver doesn't get hit, presumably, because, you know, he's got the thing covering his, the back of his head, you know, the, the part of the seat. And so he tries to back over car, you know, Porter, and they're like, ah, we got him. And then he shoots up through the car, and then one guy gets out, you know, like, ah, I'm just, I'm gonna get down there, shoot him. And the moment he gets out of the car, because you think for a second that, oh, he's going to get Porter. And Porter just rolls out, pff, just perfect, you know. And the a bit where you think that, you know, Lucy is going to shoot Porter, and then the, Porter's going to shoot Lucy, you know. And the, uh, hey, where are you taking him? Yeah, I'm talking to you, fat boy. And he just, like, checks his excess weight. <clears throat> like, you know, I'm, I'm not fat, you know, this is perfect. I love the, the hammer wielder. I love his the look on his face. Like, just when you see, because at first you don't know what they're going to do to him, you know. You just hear Bronson talking about, oh, it's going to take three weeks, if you hurt him, you know. And I'm, I'm going to give you a blood transfusion just to make sure you stay alive as long as I want you to, you know. And... Then just, you know, a nod to the guy or something, and you just see him, you know, with the hammer. And you see the bare feet on Porter, and you just know, aww, aww. And the guy, just the smile on his face, you know. And he's about to hit, are you going to tell us where it is? This little piggy went to market, just <laughs> friggin' perfect. And just smacks it, you know. And the next one, and then he's about to go for the third one, and then Porter says, wait. And the guy, he just, he had this smile on his face, like a 10-year-old in a candy store. And suddenly he just, aw, I'm not going to smash any more toes. Just perfect, you know. And also the, the, the description of Val, you know. You are, you know, you, you are of value to us, Val. You lack compunction. That comes in handy. You know, and, and and John Glover's, you know, Glover doesn't have a big part, but you remember him, you know, just that bit with, you know, a stitch in time. So, stitch this mud up for me, Phil. Any trophies or Polaroids? Not this time. You know, just perfect. And and with the, you know, him in the car, the, you know, talking about, ah, it's probably the sex with her, and the dog, too. You think so? Just wait a little bit, you know, he's like, I was joking, you know, and, and that actually brings me to that scene. I love that Porter, he could have killed them without them ever knowing. That's not what he wants to do. He wants their last moments on this planet to be fully aware that they are getting blown up in a car, you know, by him. That is exactly what he, just the, the sheer assuredness with which he acts, you know, the, the fact that he just lets it ring, that, obviously, you know, because he knows that, you know, Tane, and they're just sitting there going like, you know, he's not going to be smart enough to figure this out, you know, they're, they don't even think about that maybe he's behind them, and like, you know, that it's risky to be sitting in a car, you know, when there's someone out there who might want to kill you, and, you know, they don't t t take care to be watchful of their surroundings, so he gets in under the car, Cuts the, I don't know, the fuel. Help me out here, car people. You know what I mean. And gas pump? Whatever. And, you know, it pours out the gasoline. And it, of course, runs backwards, you know, towards him. And then suddenly, I think, was it Jungle? No, it's not Jungle Lover. It's that other guy. Maybe it's the driver who, like, spots him in the, the rear window thing. That, yeah, you know what I mean, I think. You know, and he's like, he's behind us. And Glover's like, what? He's behind us? And, you know, he's just standing there with the cigarette and just throws it. And you see from down below, and he just blows out the smoke. Slow motion, hits, you know, cigarette hits the gas pool, lights up the thing. And just, they're like, oh, no, get out. And pff, blows up. And Porter gets himself another cigarette. You know, just pitch perfect. I suppose that more or less covers... I like that the Porter returns and saves Maria because I've, I've got my cigarettes. You know, it's just... Yeah, I've, you know, I, he didn't know that Val was going to come there. It's just... And the, you know, 
again, you just really want the guy to die there. Val talking about how, you know, he's going to just destroy her and, excuse me, and the, I don't know, the, what's it called? You know, the, the yeah, you, you get the sense that, you know, obviously he was the one who really beat her up very badly, you know. And that little bit, too, about how, you know, he's so, you know, he always beats up the the sex workers that he's with, you know, that that is kind of, you know, and, and that just, and, and her description of him. I'd say is quite accurate, you know. And I also really like that about the film, that it's actually, it's psychologically accurate, you know. It, I don't know, maybe not entirely, but it just, I didn't really, I can't spot a character that I feel like is just, you know, I don't know, unrealistic or, yeah, psychological, that, that isn't psychologically credible. It just, all they all seem like, you know, yeah, um, and, you know, because there there are some really nasty people in the film, but you can kind of see why they are. Like, you know, Stegman, the bottom feeder, is just kind of, you know, he's really desperate to get a big score, you know. Yeah, Val's, the, you know, yeah, it's right in the movie. You know, too scared of his own shadow, so, you know, he has to beat up a girl in order to get it up, you know, all this stuff. And and Porter, you know, I think I think it's Fairfax who actually puts words to it. It's principle, you know. And he himself starts, you know, at the beginning of the film, you know, in the, in the flashback where we get the exact details of what happened with, you know, rule number one, always be happy with what you got. You know, he he's a principled man. You know, he stole 70 grand, he's going to give it back. You know, Rosie hasn't done anything to anyone. She should be, well, he also, you know, he cares about her. And I like the, the little bit about, you know, you could have, you could have asked me to quit. You could have asked me to drive you somewhere else. I should have quit. I should have drove, driven you somewhere. You know, the, yeah, yeah, something like that. You know, the, the, yeah, I, I quite like, and, and the, the last line, you know. We agreed that if she'd stop hooking, Dad'd stop shooting people. Maybe we were aiming high, you know, p perfect. I suppose actually one of the few things where this isn't that neo noir or the noir in general is that he's never actually tricked by the Rosie character. Although then I. Then again, I guess the, I don't know, femme fatale? Well, the, the female who tricks him in the film, if, you know, going by the idea that, you know, the, the, the trope that any noir production should have such a character, it would be his wife, you know, obviously. That, you know, I guess she just fills that role. And then in, instead, they had this sort of more, bit more traditional, bit more upbeat kind of love stuff, because going by the film in its finished version now, I don't know how it was originally, but going as the film is now, it basically does look like it'll work out between the two, you know, which, it's it's really the one optimistic trait of the film, is their relationship, you know, which does, yeah, get increasingly better, and yeah. And I like that, you know, she utilizes her talents, you know, she, she knows how to, with, with little Johnny, you know, she knows how to charm a man. And even, even to the point where he is so, you know, has, uh, lowers his guard to the point where even after she puts the first half of the, what's it called? the handcuffs, you know, on him. Even after that, you know, he allows her to put the second, you know, lock, whatever, thing of the handcuffs on him, you know. And I love how the moment that he, 
is trapped. She's just like completely you know, breaks character and just immediately, you know, gets the skirt down, just and, and he's like, Hello <laughs> just perfect, you know, and again and pretty sad testament to how you know how easy us guys can be sometimes. But I'd be doing the same thing for Maria Bow in this movie. And even more so Lucy Lou. Uh, that might actually be everything. Yes, so if you have anything you would like my thoughts on the film, just put it down below. Please rate and comment, and hey, if you like this video, that subscribe button's just waiting for you to click it.